Okay, folks, welcome to Introduction to Human Biology, Part 3. So the last big question we're going to look at this semester is how um, do body systems affect one another? Um, and to answer that question, we need to look at how different body systems, different organ systems are integrated with one another. Each system in um, an organism that has organ systems has specialized functions. Um, but no body system can get along without all of the others. Um, and that's what we mean when we say that they are integrated with one another. They have to work together in order to keep us alive. So this semester we're going to group uh, body systems with reference to one of six different functions. And there are lots of different ways that you can break up body systems um, in terms of presenting the materials. But we're going to focus on control and regulation, uh, structure, support, and movement, exchanging materials with the environment, transporting fluids within the body, protecting us against pathogens, disease-causing organisms, and making more of us. So we're going to start this semester once we get past the tissue level of an organ system uh, level. Once we move to organ systems, we're going to start by looking at the nervous system, which is, as you might guess, involved in control and regulation of other body systems. So as we've already learned in the first or second lecture, it's a control center for homeostasis. Um, I'm sure you know that your skeletal muscles move because your nervous system tells them to do. Um, and the nervous system also allows for really rapid communication between certain parts of the body. Then we're going to turn to the skeletal system. So we're going to look at structure, support, and movement. The skeletal system um, allows us to, it's one of the ways that our bodies are able to uh, have the shape that they do. And it allows us to resist the force of gravity. So it provides a framework. Many parts of the skeletal system also protect our squishy bits. They protect our organs. So the brain and the spinal cord are both encased in bone. And our heart and lungs are encased by the thoracic, what's referred to as the thoracic cage. Um, because we have more than one bone and the, our bones are articulated or joined with one another, that allows us to perform flexible movement with our body. Um, when you add in <clears throat> um, ligaments and skeletal muscles. And then last but certainly not least, um, our skeletal system, our bones, are an absolutely critical storehouse for minerals such as calcium and phosphorus. After we talk about the skeletal system, we're going to jump into the muscular system, no pun intended. There are three different types of muscle tissue. Skeletal muscle, which is involved in moving the skeleton, moving the bones. Um, it also generates a large um, portion of the heat in our bodies. And we'll talk more about how that works later. So it's not just about shivering muscles because they're metabolically active produce a lot of waste heat and our bodies use that to help maintain a stable body temperature. Next we have cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is located only in the walls of the heart and cardio that um, or cardi that prefix means heart. Last but 
not least, although it doesn't get a lot of respect, is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, like cardiac muscle, is involuntary. You, you can't decide um, to stop your heart from beating or slow down your digestion or speed it up. Um, smooth muscle is found in the walls of all hollow organs other than the heart. Next, we're going to move to the, talking about exchange with the environment. And there are two major systems involved here. The digestive system, um, which digests. To digest literally means to break down. So we're breaking down the food that we eat into nutrients, which we are then able to absorb. True story. What you put in your mouth um, and what comes out your anus never technically touches the inside of your body. Never crosses that boundary. Nutrients do, water does, but um, the actual food does not. The other system involved with exchanging materials with the environment is the respiratory system. And it has, um, in a way, it has a singular function, which is gas exchange with the environment. Um, and that's all about moving oxygen into the lungs and that from the inside of the lungs into the body and moving the waste gas carbon dioxide out of the body. Because of the way that carbon dioxide is transported in the bloodstream, the respiratory system also is involved in regulating the pH or acidity alkalinity of blood. The cardiovascular system is the one of the major, um, or I should say probably the major way that fluid is transported within the body. So the transport medium is blood. And we'll talk a lot more about what blood is made of. Um, and this system, the the job of the system is to transport oxygen and nutrients to the tissues of the body, the different cells of the body, and to carry waste away from that same, those same tissue. And there are two basic categories of what we call metabolic waste. The first is carbon dioxide, and the section, second is um, nitrogen-containing waste, sometimes called nitrogenous waste. Because blood is primarily made of water, this system's involved in fluid balance in our tissues, the tissues of our body. Blood also helps to distribute the heat generated by skeletal muscles. So it's involved in regulating body temperature. Another system involved with fluid transport within the body is the urinary system. So its job is to filter nitrogen-containing waste, its primary job, filter nitrogen-containing metabolic waste out of the blood. And as it does that, it creates urine. So Urine, in a way, you can think of urine as, uh, in part, as filtered blood. Because of the other processes that are involved in creating urine, the urinary system, along with the respiratory system, regulates the pH of blood. Next week, we'll talk about why pH is so critical. Um, why blood pH is so critical. And be <clears throat> Our, um, our urinary system, along with the endocrine system, regulates um, the amount of water in our blood, which then determines blood volume. There are two systems that help to protect us against pathogens. Um, the first 
is the immune system, which is widely distributed um, throughout the body. Um, and you'll see right down here, bone marrow is considered part of the immune system. Well, it's obviously also part of the skeletal system. So there are a number of different structures or organs in our body that um, are considered to be part of more than one system. The lymphatic system is refers to this uh, a, a whole other set of plumbing, if you want to think about it that way. If the cardiovascular system is sort of the plumbing we're all familiar with, the lymphatic system the organs of the lymphatic system help to protect us against disease-causing organisms. Um, but the lymphatic uh, vessels are another mechanism for maintaining the appropriate amount of fluid in our bloodstream versus in the tissues versus inside our cells. And then the final function so the lymphatic system is uh, absorption and transport of fats from the digestive system. So without a lymphatic system, you can't absorb any fats. And while that might sound good if you're trying to lose weight, um, it turns out that um, you can't, you can't live without lipids, which is the class that fats belong to. Another system that um, helps to protect us to, against pathogens is the integumentary system. Like other systems, it has many functions. So it's the integumentary system consists of the skin or the cutaneous membrane, hair, nails as accessory organs in the system, and it's considered the first line of defense against uh, in the immune system. Um, it helps to protect us from the outside world, and that includes protecting us from pathogens. Our skin also helps to regulate body temperature and um, to eliminate a small amount of metabolic waste. making more of us. That would be the reproductive system. Um, by and large, in animals, there are basically two types of reproductive system, anatomically male and female. And the function of the system is to produce, um, in biology, what are known as offspring, um, what we humans call babies. Um, the reason that I have here, there are basically two types of systems, is that the process of becoming, um, of taking a certain set of genes um, and building a body from it and sexual, what we call sexual differentiation, um, is remarkably complex. The complexity of the process means that there are lots of ways in which um, the body's internal environment and the external environment around a developing fetus, um, developing newborn, developing child can influence um, sexual differentiation. So it's not as black and white as it sometimes seems. Oops. Finally, we're going to circle back around at the end of this semester to control and regulation again. Um, and we will, at that point, discuss the endocrine system. We're splitting up the nervous and the endocrine system um, for a couple reasons, but probably the most important one is that the endocrine system um, regulates so many other body systems um, in such um, complicated ways that until you've learned about the other body systems, it's kind of hard to make head or, head or tails out of it. So the major function is homeostasis, and it 
the system accomplishes that by producing what we call endocrine hormones. These are protein or lipid molecules that are released into the bloodstream, travel wherever the blood goes, and so they can influence different um, physically very widely separated parts of the body. And as you can see here, they touch, hormones touch just about everything about us. Different hormones affect our mood, our sleep patterns, sexual functioning, sexual desire, um, our ability to reproduce, our ability to grow and develop, what kind of metabolism happens in different parts of our bodies, um, and even what the function of different tissues in our bodies are. So when we talk about the integration of all of these different systems, um, all body systems are involved, except for perhaps the reproductive system. Um, they're involved in maintaining homeostasis. And you can't get by without any one of them, except for, again, perhaps the reproductive system. Um, dysfunction, a problem in one system, can have effects in other systems. So think about um, if you have a problem digesting food, let's say. So a problem in the digestive system. Well, that's going to affect your energy level, right? If you're not absorbing nutrients, it's going to affect your immune system because you're not going to be able to, um, the cells of the immune system aren't going to be able to do their jobs without the proper resources. You're not going to be able to repair injured tissue as well if you're not absorbing nutrients. So that's just one example. Um, I'd like you guys to think about just with what you know, don't look anything up, just kind of brainstorm um, by yourself or with someone else how one, any particular system might influence another. Um, unfortunately, my little GIF here is not, doesn't work in this app, but you can sort of see this is. Um, believe it's called Jenga, right? Um, you take too many pieces out from any place and the tower is going to topple over. So sort of summarize all three of these lectures really quickly. We're going to all semester be coming back to these four themes and these four questions. What's the relationship between structure and function in our bodies? What happens when structures change? How does that influence function? How are our bodies put together? Right. Next week we're going to start um, with the tiniest components in, uh, that contribute to um, making all of our bodies. Um, which are atoms and subatomic particles, um, and we'll proceed through biochemistry. Next week, we'll talk about cell biology, or the following week, we'll talk about cell biology. Third question is, how are living bodies regulated? And the answer to that is homeostasis, um, primarily negative feedback mechanisms so that the body, um, here's our set point, the body adjusts our function so that we remain within limits that are compatible with life. And then finally, how do body systems affect one another? And 
that's the theme of integration of systems. Um, one of the one of the things that can happen when you start to study human biology, anatomy, and physiology is that you learn about body one body system in isolation from the others, and um, but that's 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 not how things work, right? Um, when someone is ill, um, there might be the primary problem might be in one body system. Um, but as a clinician, you're going to have to deal with its, the effects of the primary system on all of the other systems of the body. All right. That'll do it.